great to see so many people here today. So, welcome. Uh, let's see, before we get started, I'd like to welcome anyone who's never been here before. And I'll start in this section. And I believe everyone there has been here before. So, now we're going to this section. Who's here for the first time? I can see this lady first. Would you like to stand up and introduce yourself? My name is Donna Smith. I'm relatively new to Asheville about four months ago. I read about your article. It sounded intriguing. Well, we're glad Welcome. you're here. Thanks for coming. Thank yes, ma'am. And I'm Masha Murphy, and I'm from Swananoa, and I also read the article. Oh, and I was very impressed, and I thought I'd just go with that. Well, thank you. It's across from Jackson Funeral Home, 
there's a wooded lot, and then there's, uh, if you're driving down on the left side, there's actually that Greek restaurant or Mediterranean restaurant, Pete Express, and then uh, the chiropractor and a couple of paint store, things like that. Right past that on the same side of the street is where it is. So he said it'll take five to seven months to complete. And so it's awesome. I mean, we couldn't, we're just so blessed. It's going to be beautiful. Twice the size of this building, wooded. What more could we ask for? So, <laughs> And we, he will. He's already intending on that. Yeah, I'm with you on that end. You have room for 200. Yeah, that's right. So bring your friends. That's right. So bring your friends. Where, see, we're already looking at us here today. We can not stay here too much longer anyway. So there you have it. Um, so that, uh, I'll have more uh, announcements as we go along. Uh, please silence your cell phones if you haven't already. And I'm going to, um, uh, last week's attendance, uh, 68 folks, 68 souls, and we had a nice offering, and this year, up to date, we're ahead of schedule, so I like that. So, um, today is the first Prosperity Plus class with Susan and Claire. It's at 2 o'clock, and it is, if you stand up, you two, so they can come see you, if you don't mind. These two do an awesome job with this class. It, it will change your life in a great way. So talk to them after the service. It's not too late to get in. I'd love to have you join them. There they are, so you can uh, talk to them after. And it's going to be over at the office on Brooklyn Avenue. So thank you, girls, for doing this. Uh, yeah. This week, uh, Friday, uh, Friday night and Saturday, uh, some of you may know Scotty or Sarah Putnam on the left and her friend Deborah Moffitt. They've been doing these uh, seminars, Clear Vision seminars, uh, in Charlotte and in Charleston, South Carolina, and then they're doing one here this weekend. Friday night is a free introduction at 6.30. I recommend you come. They're great gals. It's really a, a wonderful opportunity uh, to have them here doing this. Uh, come Friday, see if you like it. If you do, you can come on Saturday. Also, on the email that I send out, you can click through and read more about it. So, uh, looking forward to that and um, hope to see you all here on Friday. Also, uh, here's our soul family meeting. I don't know if we're the Brady Bunch or the folks on the right, but uh, <laughs> anyway, we're going to have a meeting. And uh, so, next, uh, it's going to be just all about our, our good news, our changes, uh, what, you know, envisioning all sorts of good things. And that's going to be immediately following the service next Sunday. So it's going to be a potluck. So we'll have to, after the service, uh, tear things down, set up some tables. And then after we eat, we'll have a, a meeting and just keep you up to date and uh, make sure we have every, we got some really cool things to share with you. And um, hope everyone can make it. Uh, make sure you, you mark your calendar for that because this is a real important <coughs> meeting and we're going to have a great time. And also, today, we are blessed to have Aurora with us, who's going to perform in just a few moments. Aurora, you're awesome. And, and before we go there, I'd like to just take a moment and close our eyes and bless our time here together. So take a nice deep breath and just take in all this love in this room here right now. And open your hearts and minds and connect with every soul here. And give thanks for the many blessings that we continue to receive. We are so grateful and we are so blessed. And we place our future in the hands of spirit. And know that all is amazing. We ask that this time together today be used for the highest and holiest of purposes, so that we may leave here inspired, connected, living more from our hearts. And so it is. Amen. And now, Mr. Terry. Oh. <laughs> Good morning.
Seems a while since I've been here. Yeah. What's that noise? Get your words up in just a second. Get your words up in just a second. Oh, you don't miss that. You know what happens when you put the words up there? They you take look, their eyes off you. Yeah. So I'm looking out at the audience and they're all going. first we expect you to know it anyway. So it's called the light of God. So shall are you ready? shines within you and it's with you every day bringing love to everybody in the things you do and say it's the reason that you're living it's the force that drives you on the stars up in the heaven, it's your morning sun. Last verse, same as the first, four times as loud, baby. All the light of God is in me, and it shines. Ago about what song I was going to sing. Oh, good. <laughs> I don't have to take this abuse. I can go anywhere and get this abuse. Uh, <laughs> so, um, this is song. I'm sure you're bored with songs from my new CD, so I, I thought I'd play some, some of the older ones. And uh, this is a song um, that I thought was appropriate with all the changes that are going on. It's called Every Road Leads Somewhere. Even though 
with my little dog. Can't you see that it may be you'll find the one who's going to take your heart. You'll find the one who's going to take your heart. Follow that road. Don't turn around. Know in your heart that you're on the solid Something new around every day. Take a chance, you'll find romance. It may be the place you'll find your new best friend. It may be the place you'll find your new best friend. Yeah, it may be the place you'll find your new best friend. Cause every road leads somewhere.
nice deep cleansing breath. And allow the vibration of this music flow through you, awakening, healing and purifying every cell of your being and every thought in your mind. to do so, you may place your hands over your heart. And envision your heart expanding, opening up, letting go of all past hurts. envision this area extending its energy and love beyond your physical body connecting with each and every person here today blessing them loving them honoring them And this energy, this love, this light transforms all fear into love, <coughs> all sickness into health, all lack into prosperity. For you are only love. <coughs> Accept this now. Every being on this planet Earth is created in the likeness and image of this light, this love that we feel here now. Envision this room right now filled with white light and any thought any situation that is brought to this light is reborn in this moment. If you have a physical condition or an issue in your life, or if you have a friend or a situation that you would like to bring into our space right now, invite them in. See this love washing clean all illusion of separation. Awakening 
each and every one of us to God's perfection that dwells within us, that is us. And now we give thanks knowing that we are reborn, renewed in this moment. Holy Spirit, Mother, Father, God, we commit to living in your love. We forgive our past. We place our future in your hands. And know that all is divine. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Aurora. That's beautiful. Before I go into my talk today, um, I want to give an update. I uh, received a message earlier this morning from Anna Hodges. Many of you know Anna and Mike. I've spoken of them. They've been here. The clam farmers and the, the singers. And uh, Mike has been dealing with a uh, physical uh, situation um, that has been rather challenging. Got a message today uh, thanking us so much for the prayer blanket and saying that she can't wait to tell me the miracle that occurred from that. So what goes, thank you Susan for doing that. And uh, just continue to see Mike in perfection and healed and whole and uh, free of any limitations of his body. And uh, we believe in miracles around here. So mm -hmm. everything is, is divine and well in God's world and in Mike's world and in our world and we're all blessed. So just uh, wanted to thank you guys for continuing to keep him in your prayers and others as well. Okay, who has seen the new Yogananda movie? Okay, cool. Well, we saw Ethel there the other night. Uh, it, you know, it was a fantastic, is there anyone who isn't familiar with uh, Paramahansa Yogananda? Okay, cool. Well, we're going to learn about him today a little bit. And I do want to tell you a little bit first about this image here. And this image, if you've been to our house, uh, hangs in our living room. And it was one of the greatest uh, manifestations. People say, you're a good manifester. And I'm like, yeah, I guess I am. Because this was really cool. Um, when Ellen and I were out in, uh, on a three-month journey across the U.S. and Canada in, our, in our, her brand new Chevy Tahoe back in 2000, one of our stops was in Nevada City, California at uh, the Self-Realization um, Fellowship uh, Retreat Center. And it, uh, anyway, we walked in. It, it was one of Parmahansa's um, retreat centers, beautiful community. I mean, talk about a perfect model for an intentional community. It was really gorgeous. And they had a, a retreat center where you could actually eat and stay. And we stayed there and walked into the uh, main hall there, and this image, this poster was there. And it grabbed me uh, immediately. Those eyes, his energy, I was taken in immediately by that. And so, uh, of course, I went to the bookstore and I said, uh, do you have any of those posters available? And they said, no, those were back uh, from the 1920s and um, this is an antique poster. So I was like, oh, shucks, okay. Well, anyway, a couple weeks later, I'm back in uh, West Palm Beach, and I'm playing golf with a friend of mine, and we're having lunch, and I was telling her about this poster. I'll just put it that way. I won't bore you with all the details. And I gave her all the details, the turquoise, the, the beautiful orange, and his eyes and everything. And I said, but, you know, I was so disappointed that uh, they didn't have it because it really spoke to me. Well, a few months go by, I get a phone call from her, and she says, I got something for you. 
And I was like, oh, cool. They had no idea what, and she hands me this poster. Now what happened, she had been to, she and her husband go to the Rose Bowl every year in Pasadena. They went to the uh, Self-Realization Fellowship in Pasadena. She sees the poster on the wall and goes to the bookstore and says, do you have any of those posters? And they said, you won't believe this, but we just cleaned out the basement and we found a box of these posters pristinely wrapped. They're uh, almost 100 years old, have you? And uh, she said, well, I'll take one. And so it's one of the, my spiritual treasures is this poster because I love the energy of Paramahansa Yogananda. You may have uh, read his book, Autobiography of a Yogi, um, definitely a spiritual classic. As a matter of fact, um, he got to the point in his life where he said that his teaching was going to be through writing because he knew, he knew his life was uh, not going to be a long-lived one on this planet. So he, he wrote this beautiful book and other books. And um, as a matter of fact, uh, Steve Jobs, this was a book that he kept on his iPad. And at his funeral, they passed it out to everyone who was there, that book. It was that meaningful for him. So I guess if it's good enough for Steve Jobs, maybe we may want to pay attention to this. But, uh, you know, he basically, uh, when Yogananda, before, one thing I found interesting, there were a couple things in the movie that I thought were interesting. And this movie is so well done, and I actually do, uh, well, since we're moving, it's not going to happen for a few months, but I definitely want to do a showing when it comes, uh, when we're in our new space, because it's a fabulous film and a rendition of his life, and so well done. And anyway, one thing that I found interesting was in the beginning, they talked about when he was in his mother's womb, how he, he was already awake. He knew exactly what was going on, what he was coming into. Uh, pretty amazing. I mean, he's definitely a, a self-realized being. And so he came and he knew he was different um, and spent his life, his young life, seeking and, and meditating and doing things that most kids don't really do when they're that young. And he, in his teens, uh, uh, he had been seeking a guru. He, he connected with a guru and uh, was inspired um, to start a school for living. I believe that's what he called it. It's it basically a school for uh, how to live school for boys is what he started. And I'm thinking to myself, wouldn't this be a fantastic thing if we had how to live schools for our kids? And it's not necessarily reading, writing, and arithmetic, but it's really just being present, being still, being quiet, being aware, being awake and living from our hearts. And you know, this was back in the 1920s, even before that, I believe. And it was, it was a great opportunity for these young men to really learn how to live. And uh, I believe there's still these schools going on today in India. And anyway, he decided, well, Spirit decided, uh, that it was time for him to come to America to teach. And his first stop, he took a ship across uh, uh, the ocean and landed in Boston and started teaching there to different groups and it, it went pretty well but uh, it went well but not great so eventually his travels led him across the country to Hollywood because he knew that's where the action was now you got to think back uh, that this man back in the 1920s coming to America when you know we are definitely uh, you know, getting into our industrial age and we're, you know, jazzy and fancy and, you know, doing all kinds of wild and crazy things. And here comes this man walking down the street with the long hair and, uh, you know, the robes and everything and how he came into this country and not knowing a single soul. That's what's amazing to me. But he just eventually grew uh, in popularity and people used to come to hear, you know, his message and, uh, be in his presence, and he definitely made a big impact. He, uh, he worked with industrialists and movie stars, and these people uh, supported him in a huge way to carry out um, his message and um, keep it going. Well, the Self-Realization Self Fellowship, SRF, is what he's all about. That's what he started. And to him, what this is about is for us to be, to realize who we are, to awaken, the movie's called Awake, 
to remember who we are, to awaken to who we are, which is God. And all of this other stuff, uh, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Doesn't mean that it doesn't matter, but it really doesn't matter in the big, in the big <laughs> picture, if that makes sense. I mean, it's great to have a building. It's great to have clothes to wear. It's great to have community and, and a job and food and things of that nature. But there is something way, way beyond that. And his whole premise was for us to awaken to the presence of the divinity within each and every one of us. So he um, did this through uh, the Course in Miracles, for example. He didn't use that because it wasn't around then. But he taught um, the uh, techniques for mind training. Yoga of the mind is basically what it was. That's what A Course in Miracles does. That's what really all spirituality is about. It's about us training our mind to, to be in alignment with God more in our life to eventually there's no disconnect. It's just always there. We live from that premise. Well, last uh, Saturday in our ministry group, our ADL group a week ago, we talked about the levels of prayer. And there's, you know, the gimme gimme, uh, you know, God, I want this, uh, please give me this, I need this, I need that. Well, they actually, in our, in our teaching materials, <laughs> uh, they call that the lowly worm ver version of prayer. You know, it's like, you know, it's, and, and it goes into meditation. But really, where being self-realized is, is just the pure connection with source. And, and that's the highest level of prayer. That's true connection. And so we can all get there. That's what we're here to do is to wake up. And we're not far from that. You know, we're so blessed here uh, every week. I, I hear stories of people waking up a little more to maybe where they were challenged in the past to find a little more peace and, and comfort in their lives in living more from their heart, more understanding, more compassionately. And so that's part of the process is lifting that veil through forgiveness and through connection with God. But he talks about some of the key points, which I think are so, I love one thing that he uh, stood for. And number one, I found one thing that really stuck out to me in the movie was how much he loved Jesus and what Jesus stood for. And you know, I am, um, I'm certainly in love with Jesus myself. I, I love Jesus, I love other ascended masters. But I think the, the idea of who Jesus, what Jesus came to represent, maybe has been a little bit uh, misrepresented. And I don't say that with judgment, I just uh, say that maybe we've missed the mark a little bit on that. And, and you know, but it was really, he, he definitely revered Jesus and loved Jesus and followed Jesus' teachings. And he really sought to find that common thread that flowed through all spirituality, all religions, all philosophies and theologies. Just what I believe too, let's find that common thread that flows through and not what separates us, but what makes us one and unified. And a couple of things, the key points of his self-realization movement are this, to disseminate among the nations a knowledge and scientific techniques for attaining direct personal experience of God. And so that's really, you know, he looked at this as a science of yoga, science of the mind. I mean, another great uh, spiritual offering that's out there for all of us. It, it is about us knowing that we can always be in, well, we are always in union with God. Sometimes we just don't tune into that station. And uh, that to teach that the purpose of life is the evolution through self-effort of man's limited mortal consciousness into God consciousness and to this end establish self-realization temples for God communion throughout the world. And so it really is, again, to transcend our mortal mind and know that what is real about us is changeless, formless, and eternal, and only love. And we can transcend this world in an instant. We just have to be willing not to give our attention and our focus to the small stuff, you know? Don't sweat the small stuff, and then remember it's all small stuff, and how much energy do we give to the small stuff, the meaningless stuff, instead of giving that to, to our connection or union with God. And he goes on, this is about Jesus, 
to reveal the complete harmony and basic oneness of original Christianity as taught by Jesus Christ and original yoga as taught by Krishna and to show these principles of truth are the common foundation of true religions. And wouldn't it be nice, I, Jesus did not want a, a church built in his name. It was, you know, that was, that was man-made. Really, Jesus came here to represent and other masters, Krishna and, and Yogananda, that we are far more than our bodies. We're far more than the illusion that this world that we've made so real. And we can um, be liberated when we do this from our threefold suffering, which he talks about being physical disease, mental inharmonies, and spiritual ignorance. So if we could, uh, we can liberate ourselves from all suffering if we just make a choice for God or peace, rather than staying stuck in the whirlwind of, it's exhausting to try and fix and manipulate this world, isn't it? And I, or is it just me? Uh, and and uh, you know, it's some. I, I know, as a course in miracles, it says the body is incapable of being tired. It's it's our mind chatter that wears us down. It's all that ego. Da, 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 da. You got to do this. You got to be there. You got to do that. Ba, ba, ba. And I will say that um, I think we can all together attest to say that this miracle of this move. Uh, has been extraordinary and I take no credit for it because if I was trying to fix it, I'd, I'd be like a dog with my tongue hanging out. And uh, you know, it's just, uh, once I got past my initial shock and uh, reaction, uh, I said, okay, spirit, I really, really don't know what to do with this because this is happening too fast uh, for, for, my, for my timeline. You know, my methodical organized mind was like, okay, I'll take steps and in a year, We'll start a building fund and we'll, we'll get everything all organized. And I was even like, okay, we're going to have two sittings at Thanksgiving next year so we can make that happen. So I wasn't thinking of being out of here. And it's like the universe just came and gave me a big kick in the, in the rear end and said, no, it's time. And uh, so, but God, what a blessing. And how often do we close down to the gifts the universe wants to um, give us because we think we know what we want, but I, I found out I don't have a clue. I really don't. <laughs> I do not have a clue. And some people may say that's uh, not a great idea. Uh, the Course in Miracles says a healed mind doesn't plan. But what that really means to me is, yes, we can make plans, but make those holding hands with spirit, being open to surrender those to spirit and go with the flow of change, not being so locked in to what I think needs to be done, but rather just open to each and every moment, being present. And so all of these, I, I, have, I think I've been convinced enough to know that uh, I can't go back to my old way of being anymore. I just can't. And I think a lot of you, if not all of you, could relate to that as well. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel good anymore. It doesn't fit. And so we're here to really uh, overcome the physical world, overcome our bodies, really just get into our hearts, get into our mind of God, and live from that premise. That's what we're here to do. And of course, uh, the idea of oneness, he talks about to um, serve mankind as one's larger self. And I love the way that's stated. You know, it's our larger self. Mankind is us. We are one and it's real tempting some days to point our fingers and to judge and to defend and attack and to make a uh, argument for you know something uh, that we think is right or wrong. We're in judgment. But this again, God mind doesn't judge. God mind accepts and welcomes everything. Um, there is, uh, if we're in our ego mind and we're hearing certain principles sometimes uh, a card that Amy chose in our Course of Miracles group, which is one of my favorites. No evidence will convince you of the truth you do not want. Uh, <laughs> now, is that, can you all relate to that? So it's, uh, that is, that's it right there. You know, it, we can hear this, but if we're not open and willing, no evidence of what Yogananda says or anyone else or any book or teaching or philosophy tells us is, um, is gonna, we're not going to pay it any attention. 
because our ego wants to take control. But, you know, it's, it's about letting go of the reins and just flowing, going with the flow of life. And um, he talked, too, about the, that life is, is a motion picture. This illusion is just like a movie that we're watching. And so if you don't like the movie, the projector, our mind, is what we need to change. Instead of going out here trying to manipulate and fix, change the movie, change, uh, seek not to change the world, but rather change our minds about it. And self-realization is knowing and body, mind, and soul that we are one with the omnipresence of God, that we don't have to pray that it comes to us, and that we're not merely near it at all times, but God's omnipresence is our omnipresence. And we were just a, as much a part of him now as we will ever be. All we have to do is improve our knowing. So there's really, of course, in Miracles also says, there's nothing we can do to change God's mind about us. There's really nothing we have to do to be enlightened. It's just tuning in again to the God channel instead of the ego channel. And so, you know, there's, this is so inspiring. I got reignited. I really do, you know, want to pursue more uh, of his studies once we get into the new space because I think it just goes right in with everything that we learn and talk about and unifies all these great messages. But one thing, he, I love the story of his death, and he knew it was coming, and he wasn't sick. He wasn't uh, that old. He died in 1952. Uh, let me see, what, what year was he born? And I'll try and do some quick math here. Uh, 59, I almost was there, thank you. <clears throat> 59, so not old. And you know, you would think, well, he's a guru. He can transcend the body. He doesn't, he's not gonna die. Well, it's, he, I, that he taught another great lesson. He knew his death was upon him. Uh, and hours, they said that hours before he died, he had told people, you know, I'm, get, you know, I'm not going to be here in a few hours. And to some people I heard he even made a joke about it. You know, it's going to be really big tonight. And um, so sure, sure enough, he, he was doing a lecture at the Biltmore Hotel in Los Angeles and, and just, just died right there after his lecture, right on the podium, right at the podium. And uh, so any... <laughs> And uh, so it's, uh, <laughs> I think I'm going to be here a while. I choose, to, I choose to be here a while. But the cool thing is his body did not decompose. And it was, uh, it, that's another thing you hear about with ascended masters, that their bodies don't decompose. And I think that's so cool. Um, I don't know what the case would be now, uh, almost 100 years or 50 years later, anyway, 60. But it's... Um, there, there is something different in him than us, and at the same time, there's nothing different in him than us. But his realization, his mind, mind attuned with God always, he transcended this world, and we all have that potential, and we have to just practice to do this. So a couple of little uh, ideas that he shared, which I think are so sweet and powerful, he says, live quietly in the moment and see the beauty of all before you and the future will take care of itself. And how much worry do we give to the future and what does that do? It pulls us out of the moment. And so if, how are we going to create our future? It's being fully present now and carrying that energy into each and every moment. And so let the future take care of itself. We'll be led. You'll be led to greater things than you could ever imagine. Be as simple as you can be, and you will be astonished to see how uncomplicated and happy your life can be. And I notice so many people now are uh, in this room particularly. You know, we've all sort of been there, chased the dream, done this, that, whatever. And it's kind of like, okay, now I just want to live simply. I have a subscription that they send me free every year, which is very nice, the Palm Beach Magazine. And, um, wow, it's hard to believe. And, again, no criticism, but I, it's, what a, what a, um, that used to be a, a, my life, a lot of it. And Ellen's life, and we were just talking about this last night, you know, the, the fancy parties and the clothes. Well, I wasn't ever into the clothes you were. But... Uh, uh, <clears throat> But, uh, 
it's, it's just all about the stuff and the fancy cars and the facelifts and the big houses and the stuff and, and, the, uh, and the continual on that hamster wheel of, you know, then you got to keep all that stuff or to get it, you got to work and, you know, so you're not in the present moment a lot of the time. Not to say there's not wealthy people and successful people who are very tuned in. I'm not saying that at all. But to me, it's like, oh, I can catch my breath now. Simplicity for me feels really good. I don't have to chase things down like I used to. And one of, uh, this is such a great statement too. He says, you may control a mad elephant. You may shut the mouth of the bear and the tiger, ride with the lion and play with the cobra. By alchemy, you may learn your livelihood. You may wander through the universe incognito make vassals of the gods and be ever youthful. You may walk in fire and live in fire, but control of the mind is better and more difficult. And so, you know, all of this, these accomplishments, all of this stuff is, um, is a distraction from being in our, in our God mind. And a, a perfect example, I'll go back, Effort, the Course talks about effortless accomplishment. When we're in our God mind, life isn't an effort. It doesn't mean you don't do anything. You're not active in life. You're not making decisions. And you're not um, you know, going to work or whatever you need to do to sustain yourself. But it becomes effortless because you're not doing it alone. You're doing it with all the support and help of the universe. So for me, all of these accomplishments are wonderful but if we can't find that sense of peace and tame our mind, what good is it really? Because what we think those things are gonna bring us are what we're seeking. We, we think it's those things that are gonna do it for us, but it's really what we're seeking is the peace of God in connection with God. And the way to do this is read a little, good, I do, I don't read much, uh, meditate more and think of God all the time. So it's just about putting God Seek first the kingdom of God and let everything else come to us from that premise. You know, reading is great, but eventually, you know, words are not, are, are a means to an end. They're not God. They're a, a tool for getting us there. Meditation is also a tool and a very valuable one because it trains us to um, quiet our mind. But what we're really seeking through that oneness with God is once we do that, we are self-realized. And we can do that by thinking of God more often. And, you know, maybe do wear a rubber band around your wrist or just something to, to really get ourselves in that state of uh, practice of where we're thinking of God more often through the day. Um, we have come to earth to entertain and to be entertained. And I love that because we take things so darn seriously. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just it's, it's ridiculous sometimes how seriously we get all bent out of shape over whatever. And, you know, I, I love Shakespeare. All the world's a stage and we're the players. And, you know, we're here to entertain and have fun with each other, not to pick on each other and to judge each other and to attack each other and defend each other, but to entertain and be entertained. What if we just showed up for life and knew that it was like a big party? Someone said when they came to the Namaste Center, the way they would describe it, it's like a spiritual party. So it's, uh, you know, we're not so serious and, uh, you know, we're not, uh, but I think spirit is lighter and more uh, fun and loving. Uh, we don't have to be so, so downtrodden and serious anymore. Have fun. And um, I want to make sure that, um, you know, we all really take this to heart because um, we've got a great future ahead of us. We really do. I mean, it's so exciting to think of the possibilities. I, I, um, my limited mortal mind just six months ago said, well, you know, I think that I'd like 100 people. That, that would be good for me, and I'm, I'm okay with that. And, and then I thought, and I was okay with that. I was like, yeah, that's not so much to manage. And, um, but on the other hand, all of a sudden, uh, it's like spirits like, get over it. You know, let us take care of this. And if, you, if, if there's supposed to be 300 people, 500 people, we'll make space for you. It's okay. But this is a great opportunity for us collectively to, to really 
at a time in this world when so many people are, are looking for what we have here. And to be the example of, of true compassion and forgiveness and love and joy and harmony and peace and all those good things, you know, we're it. We're having a ball. And every one of you is instrumental in that role. Uh, you know, the Course in Miracles says God is incomplete without me. Well, the Namaste Center is incomplete without each and every one of you. And it's, uh, it's important that we maybe ask ourselves, how can I be of greater service to the center, to my spirit family, and greater to, uh, service to the world? So it's up to us to really step into the, the commitment. Bob Stevens, who uh, many of you all know, he teaches uh, mastery, uh, language mastery. And it's all about languaging with him. And, and it's, once you go through some classes with him, you, you know, it's, you don't say I want anymore or I should or all of these things you recognize and catch yourself. And he's, he talks about when we uh, say a negative thought, say cancel clear. And well, one of his things also is if we do something schmucky or stupid or something we're not proud of, not to dwell on it, but just in that moment say I recommit. And that's a powerful statement, I recommit. And that's what we're doing here. We're recommitting in every moment. Don't be uh, burdened by, uh, by your past, but just say, I recommit. I recommit to God. I choose to walk with God in everything I do. And so it's really um, about that inner knowing. And we're all getting there. We're all, like he says, and like every other teaching says, we're already there. We just have to recognize it and remember it. And about the money thing, he, uh, I love this statement, and it's so true. It says, having lots of money while not having inner peace is like dying of thirst while bathing in the ocean. And that's so true because uh, inner peace is where it's at. We really, if we connect with God, tune into God, open our hearts up, then everything will unfold in a far greater way than we could ever imagine. We just have to be willing to do that. And in closing, he says, be afraid of nothing, hating none, giving love to all, feeling the love of God, seeing his presence in everyone, and having but one desire, for his constant presence in the temple of your consciousness, that is the way to live in the world. And so it is. Namaste. So I know Barbara and Mark were uh, big uh, in the self-realization movement. May have to solicit them to do a group in the future. See, there you go. Mark's willing, Barbara's running. <laughs> okay, so if you will take a moment to bless your offering and hold it to your heart. And see this gift as an extension of your prosperity, your gratitude, your appreciation for this center and all you have received here. Holy Spirit, we ask that you use these gifts for the highest and holiest of purposes so that our center may align with your will. We are so blessed. We are so grateful. We place our future in your hands and know the best is yet to come. And so it is. Amen. Okay. Yes, sir. I love those comments about money. <laughs> Somebody once told me that people who think that money can't buy you happiness don't know where to shop. <laughs> well, that'll bring us down a few pegs right there, Terry. Making it real. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, this is a song that I recorded a long time ago. Uh, this time it's a personal CD. 
And it's about the Salvation Army. I don't know if you've heard this one before. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. So this is a, a song about the Salvation Army. We do fantastic work. And um, this is kind of, reminds me of growing up in England in the 60s. And, uh, and uh, back, back then, I don't know if they still do it, but back then, in the Salvation Army band would always come on a Sunday morning to the village square and play it. And you'd hear all the beautiful brass bands and choruses, you know. Of course, it was great unless you were trying to sleep in. <laughs> and um, then it wasn't quite so convenient. But um, anyway, I recorded this on the album. When I recorded it, I recorded it with a little brass band. They couldn't make it today. <laughs> so I would have to just imagine that part. It's called Good on the Sunday Army. Sunday finds me curled in bed. And I can hear the Sally Army in the old town square. I can hear the brass and choruses, they fill the air. And I wonder why they do it when no one's ever there. Moments later, I'm out of bed. And I'm staring out the window in the morning light. And the lasses in their bonnets make a pretty sight And I thought if that's an army, huh, it's a funny way to fight But it's an empty life when you've got no purpose And you lost and feel you're on your own If I told my workmates, they'd have said I'd gone balmy when I Ran down the stairs to join the Salvation Army. Here was love that I could depend upon. And all of my emptiness had gone. You can just imagine that little brass band playing in the square. Ba 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 ba. Ba da dum. Ba dum. Ba da 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 da. But it's an empty life when you've got no purpose and you're lost in fear you're on your own. If I told my workmates, they'd have said I'd gone balmy. When I ran down the stairs to join the Salvation Army, here was love that I could depend upon. And all of my emptiness had gone. Some years later, looking back, well, I think I've found the answer and I'd like to say You need never be alone when God's a prayer away And he'll fill you with his sunshine when your life is cold and gray Perfect. Hey. Okay. So, Aurora, you want to come join us for the circle? I thought I would. Okay. Well, I'm glad you will. So, in the meantime, let's make a nice circle and we'll do our closing.
And, and this is why we need a new space. So that's good, yes. So let's just close our eyes and blast the center of our circle with all the love that we feel here right now and see this beauty bless our Mother Earth and all of her children. And we give thanks. So it is. Let